Rachel Riley, hello, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? I'm not too bad. Uh, we're enjoying some lovely sunny weather here in Cardiff today. <laughs> where, where about you in the world? <laughs> uh, my, my daughter's been enjoying the puddles in London. Nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Uh, Rachel, you've had a busy couple of weeks because, of course, uh, Anne Robinson has joined the cast of Countdown. How's that been? She has. Um, it's been really fun. So she's on. What's going out at the moment is her second day of report filming because we do filming in three day blocks. And mm. we've actually got nine days in real life. So we've got a few in the can. And it's been really lovely seeing how quickly she's found her feet and how quickly she's found her patter. And she's got the hang of it and the way of the studio and is a, a really nice rapport and she's um you know in, interrogating the right question the right contestants rather the chirpy guys mm-hmm. that think they're you know god's gift to comedy she'll give them a, a bit of a grilling and then everyone else she's really nice to so it's, it's, it's been really fun yeah 100 percent. does she live up to the title of queen of mean <laughs> she's definitely different to how she was on the weakest link um mm. i mean that was that was a persona and there was a, a that was you know an, an era um when that was the the idea of the show but i mean countdown obviously you get you know, Doris, who's 80, who's watched Countdown since it started, and she's not going to be mean to Doris. No, I, I, was, think, I, I was thinking that when she got cast. I was like, oh, because there's a certain type of people who I, I see on Countdown occasionally, and then I'm just thinking, oh, my God, is Anne Robinson going to rip into these people? <laughs> yeah, I mean, she, people that can give give back and, and, and rip into her, there's, a, there's you know, really funny rapport, and, um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, like, it's great to watch. Yeah. Uh, People that, that are, you know, just there to play the countdown game and are a bit nervous because they're on telly, she's lovely too. Yeah. Is it totally quite different then? Because obviously Nick Hewer has been doing it for oh, nine, ten years and then suddenly it, it's like changed in an instant and he's Anne Robinson. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the third presenter that I've worked with and it's a sick, this sick post of countdown. And each one's brought their own personality and their own different vibe to it. And Anne is certainly like straight away, she's brought her own vibe and there's a different atmosphere in the studio and it's mm. and, and it's lively and she's having fun and she's poking at the contestants. Um, but she's a seasoned pro. I mean, she's the first person down in studio every record, every every episode we're recording and she's asking really, she's really interested in, in what the contestants have to say. Um, so yeah, it's just definitely brought her own vibe, but it's, it's not the queen of me that you'd have known her from from years ago. A hundred percent. But Rachel, today, of course, we're not chatting about Countdown. We're chatting about um, now the press release says that you are a tech enthusiast. Um, so h- how long have you been a tech enthusiast? Um, well, I'm a, a science and maths geek at heart. So I did a maths degree and I, I used to work on the gadget show and my interest in, in kind of tech and, um, and gadgets comes from the, the science that we can use to, to improve the world, make things better make innovations. So I've been working um, promoting smart meters, which are meters that you can get that read your gas and electricity supplies automatically. They send real time data to, to the companies so that you don't have to send, you know, the um, the, the, the boring screen grabs or the the, the, the the numbers, you know, that when they nag for those anymore. And, and what it allows the consumer to do is get real time data on how much energy you're using. So you have a shower, you can see in real time how much energy you've used, how much that costs you. So if you want to make changes to make your life more green or save money on, on fuel, then you can easily do so. Um, but you can ask your energy supplier for them now. And the, the benefits of it, even if you didn't look at the display at all and didn't change anything, is that the energy companies can look at the national data of how we use our electricity. So um, say, you know, EastEnders finishes or there's a big game on, on football, uh, on, on telly, and suddenly the whole country wants to make a cuppa they can pre-plan and make sure that they're using renewable energy sources to fund wow. to fuel that rather than filing up the coal stations. And the, the report that's come alongside this is looking at how we might live our lives in, say, 2035, when smart technology is going to be more ubiquitous. We're going to have more um, uh, devices in our homes, like washing machines, interacting with um the, the lighting system, interacting with the heating and, and all sorts of things. And the, the, the smart meters that are the core of that. Wow. I, I suppose kind of, uh, you know, energy consumption for a lot of people it, is a little bit of an underlying worry because it's something that I think we're all scared about, but it, not, it doesn't come to the centre of a lot of our brains. Kind of we, we don't think of it immediately. Yeah. Um, would, why do you think we kind of need to change our attitudes a little bit towards this? I think, you know, the, the, the green agenda is on everybody's radar at the moment, far more mm. than it was in, in other times. And as, you know, the generations come for, come through, you know, the, the younger generations are the most engaged, I think, out, out of anyone with, with green issues and looking at 
you know, the wider implications of, of our actual, our own carbon footprints and how much energy we use and how we can, we can save that to the benefit of, of everyone. Um, but I think, you know, the, the, the thing that I like is when technology and science comes together to, so that actually you can make changes and you can make savings without having to actually even think about it, having to change mm. your life, your life. So this technology, for example, in the future, it will be able to look at um, you know, if, we, if you might have an electric car, it will it will see when the energy is cheapest, when it's greenest, and it can charge your car overnight for you. Um, you know, without you having to think about it on an automated process, or put the washing machine on, or the dishwasher, or whatever it is. Um, and it's got other lovely connotations, like um, wearable tech and health tech is something I'm really interested in. It's having a huge boom, and over the next 10, 20 years, I think that's going to you know really come into our lives. Mm. And thinking about older people or vulnerable people or people with medical conditions. If you were to have, you know, a daily routine, you get up at the same kind of time, you turn the lights on, you make a brew, you put the telly on. If for some reason that daily routine is interrupted, your smart home, the, the technology might be able to sense that and send a message to loved ones or medical professionals to be able to send a signal, maybe something's gone wrong here. Um, and it's a really unintrusive way of um, making sure everyone's all right. So there's loads yeah. of that are quite exciting some of them seem far-fetched and a long way in the future but a lot of the time I mean it's technology that I've seen when I've been working I, I finished working on the gadget show in 2013 and, and some of it was around then it's just the more we use it the cheaper it gets the more products there'll be the, the the more consumers want it and you know it drives a, a better market and the, the better the products will be and I suppose for you, because, you know, like you said, you worked on the gadget show, I suppose, do you have your finger constantly on the pulse in regards to regular updates in, in how these things are changing? Is that one of the reasons you wanted to get involved with, with this particular project? Um, I, I mean, I'm, I've never been kind of an early adopter. Um, I'm kind of more like, I'll let everybody else test it first and then I'll jump on board when it's okay. But the thing about, I mean, smart meters, there's 24 million of them across homes in the UK already um and, and they're free you can contact your energy supply now just and they'll come and fit it for you without charge etc etc um so you know they're already tried and tested and i i'm the type of person that likes easy technology i like stuff to, you know that you, that you can use without having to read a manual or do a google search um and tell me about it i just hoovered the flat and i literally had to i literally had to find myself because i hadn't used the little extension cord. i was like how does how does this work so i like it to be there on the paper for me to see and i was just struggling yeah. to find it and, it... Exactly. I'm the same. and if, if i've got a problem with my wi-fi I, I, oh I'm... don't get me started i call my husband he's the tech person in terms of he likes fiddling with all that stuff and i'm that's just just i'm just not interested in updating my virus software uh, but i'm, I'm very <laughs> In using my my computer and using the, the things but I, I let him do do that kind of stuff <laughs> yeah definitely and um just finally uh, Rachel you know the pandemic I think has had uh, a bigger fact uh, a big kind of impact on the way we we live our lives kind of environmentally um kind of what why why should somebody get invested in these kind of smart meters and looking at these potential futures for for this I think the if the pandemic's shown us anything it's just it's that not only, you know, we, we know we're damaging the planet, but there's actually room, room for optimism, room for encouragement, because you've seen how quickly the uh, air pollution can, can improve or how populations of birds can start having two babies again that they've not done mm. for 20, 30 years, simply because we've changed the way we, we, we live our lives, people are out of the way. Um, so it can regenerate and it can regenerate quickly, but we actually need to do something. And I think, you know, incremental changes can really make that difference. And like I say, we've, <laughs> this is the first step along, along the way. It doesn't really impact your life in any negative way. Um, so there's no reason not to, to get on board and ask your energy company to come along. Yeah, and yeah definitely. Help. And I suppose kind of we, we do kind of all have to learn and, and, you know, make these mistakes first before we can kind of change our lives in that, in that respect, kind of weirdly. Um, just finally, uh, Rachel, I'm going to ask you this question because I asked Susie Dent the same question. And this has oh. nothing to do with energy consumption, but... Um, I, I've always wanted to know, do you prefer filming the regular countdown or the 8 out of 10 Cats Coast countdown? <laughs> no, they're completely different things. I, I love both because I'm a numbers geek. I'm a math geek at heart. So when we film the regular countdown, I get to do far more numbers games than I would mm. on the Cats one. But the Cats one is like your own private um, comedy show. And I'm, I'm, I love my football, but I'm, I'm not you know, I'm a concert goer particularly. I don't have like favourite bands that I follow around, but comedy is my thing. And we get 
not only, you know, the most seasoned, the best comedians that you know and love, but the brilliant thing about Cats is that it, it brings through new talent. So there's loads of people that I'd never heard of before they came on Cats Our Countdown. And now they're huge. And we were lucky enough to see them first. And, you know, a lot of people may know them for making their break on Cats Our Countdown. So we're really lucky that we don't have to choose and um, got the best of both worlds with, with no. this show. Susie Dent didn't choose, if that makes any... If that <laughs> makes, she she yeah, didn't she choose that. a child. You can't do it. Yeah, true. Um, Rachel, thank you so much for having a chat with me today and have a lovely day. You too. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Rachel.